not so many years ago, Supergiant Games released a little action RPG on the Xbox Live Arcade. Not only was this well received, but it became very popular and very fast, and started to port to other systems. Now, four years later, the game finally comes to the PlayStation family in the form of a PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita game. So, here is my official review of the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV version of Bastion. The story of Bastion revolves around a young man named The Kid, who is out on a patrol working for a secluded city up high in the sky, when the ground beneath him literally crumbled away and he fell unconscious. This was during an apocalyptic event known as the Calamity. After he comes to, he heads towards the Bastion, which is supposed to be a safe haven and sanctuary for the city folks in time of strife. Once he gets there, he finds the Bastion in ruin and only a single survivor there. Once he realizes the Bastion is in ruin and if they restore the Bastion, it can essentially undo what the Calamity did, he sets out on a journey to areas outside the city to collect energy cores to power the Bastion and undo the apocalyptic event that essentially destroyed. Bastion is an action RPG set in an isometric environment. As you progress through the game, you will basically be going between your home base, which is the Bastion, that functions as a hub world, and the various missions. The hub world can be expanded upon and grown as you collect energy cores through the stages. Every time you go into an energy core, you'll, the Bastion will grow in size and you'll be able to make a new facility. Facilities can vary. There are weapon-based facilities like the arsenal that lets you re-equip your weapons, as well as the forge that lets you upgrade your weapons. There are also shops that let you buy materials with in-game currency you get from enemies, as well as areas where you can equip spirits that will enhance your skills as you level up. Out on missions, you basically have two mission types. You have training gauntlet missions, and you have regular missions. The training gauntlet missions are set around one specific weapon that equip you with that weapon right away at the beginning, and you basically go through a challenge to see how efficient you are with the weapon. The better you do, the better material you get at the end of the stage that you can use to upgrade that weapon. Normal levels have you going through a 2D, kind of 3D isometric environment as you explore, collect items, fight enemies, and essentially look for an energy core. The way these levels progress is really interesting in my opinion. As you walk, the ground literally forms in front of you, and this is also how you can tell whether you're going in the right direction or not. If the ground stops forming in front of you, and there are no enemies or interactable objects nearby, you're going the wrong way. Now you do fight enemies as you're going through these. Enemies come at you in waves in certain areas, as well as being around certain key items to function as guardians for those key items. As you defeat enemies, you get in-game currency as well as experience. Experience goes towards leveling up. Unlike most RPGs, Bastion only has 10 levels, and the leveling goes very slow. The game has a much bigger focus on weapon upgrades than leveling. When I beat the game the first time, I was actually only level 5 when I beat the final stage. You can also find items in stages. Items come in the form of health jars and black flasks that increase your health and can be used to initiate secret skills that you have equipped. Then you have materials that can be used to learn new skills and upgrade your weapons. And finally you have weapons. Weapons are scattered on various missions as you progress through the story, and every time you find a weapon, it is swapped out with one you already have and you're taught how to use it. The thing about Bastion is that there are over a dozen different weapons you can use, but you can only equip two at one time, so you kind of have to experiment around for a while to find a good pairing that you really like with your playstyle. I personally like using the Fang Repeater, which is like a semi-automatic rifle for ranged attacks, as well as the War Machete for close range attacks. As far as difficulty is concerned, you can expect Bastion to be a, a good bit difficult, but honestly, I went on the normal difficulty instead of the easy difficulty. I came close to getting a game over once, but I didn't quite get there. Every mission gives you at least two retries in case you run out of health and die. And with that in mind, if you're used to RPGs, you'll probably not get a game over at all during the game. As far as length is concerned, 
I would say the game lasts about maybe six, seven, eight hours at the most for a single playthrough. While this doesn't sound very long for an RPG, with the way the game progressed and the way the finale went through, I would agree with others that six, uh, six or seven hours is a pretty good length for this game. The presentation is the other place where I have a nitpick. First of all, the game looks really nice. It may take you a little while to get used to the small screen if you play on the PlayStation TV and then go back to the Vita, but honestly, the game's visuals and art design really show themselves well on the PlayStation Vita. Performance is where things get messy. Load times can get pretty long sometimes. Whether you're starting the game or starting a mission, I've had load times that go up into the 20 to 30 second range. This can be a little long if you're impatient. It's not terrible, but it's not great either. The other part is the part that I'm sure a lot of people are already worried about, and that is the frame rate. Yes, the frame rate does drop in a lot of areas. It doesn't drop to an unplayable level, but it does drop to a point, especially in some boss fights, where it's a nuisance. Bastion is a game that is almost five years old now, but a lot of people are still talking about it and still love it. The story isn't really as good as it could be, and the Vita version does have some annoying performance issues, but still, the game itself is very charming and is a very different type of action RPG for, that any RPG fan should try at least once. Reviews to go rates Bastion a 7 out of 10. If you have any further questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or head to my site at www.reviews2go.com.